So, we're in September now. Harvest finished up last week, last Friday. And it's time to clean some grain. So we've got a good buddy of ours, Mike. And he brought his cleaning rig. And I'm gonna show you guys kind of how that thing works. Pretty cool. So right now we're just getting stuff set up. I just pulled this grain auger away from the building. We just put chickpeas in the bin right there. And that was what was on there. So we took up the drive over deck with the skid steer over there. A couple trucks here and there. He just pulled up with his rig. We're gonna start hooking stuff up. I'm just gonna take some video along as we do it and we'll see how it turns out. So let's do it. Fun. This is Mike's rig. It's a GMC top kick. It's got a cat in it. And he's got an air compressor. He's got his generator up here. Looks like a Deutz, Deutz generator. And that's gonna power this cleaner. And then in these bins here, we have winter wheat in this one. We're gonna pull out of this bin with his equipment. And this machine here is gonna clean it, separate out the weed seeds, uh, cracked kernels, unthrashed kernels, and will give us just raw, plump seed that then we'll put into our grain trucks. And we'll put that back in the bin when we're done. Oh yeah, because we, we, gotta, we gotta make sure it's running at the right calibration, that's right. This one right here is what goes in the bin, that butts the bin up. I'm gonna park this underneath there. Oh, I just killed it. I'll shut the truck off, we don't need it running. So is this 220 then? Yeah, 240. 240, man, it's a massive cable. 240. Oh. Three phase. So that'd give you a nice jolt if you <laughs> chomped on it. Not something you want to grab onto. <laughs> but it kind of wakes you up in the morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little better than Folgers. <laughs> That's my Folgers. This this will this will power you up for all day. Yeah. Do you have any problem with those ever, those connectors at all? Getting, not with those, not the big ones there, no. I bet that's a five hundred dollar end. That uh, that end right there. Yeah. I priced them one time. Oh. You can't find that end, but I priced new ones. Okay. OSHA approved. The the male part was fifteen hundred bucks. Oh no. And the no. female part was twelve hundred. No way. No. Oh, that's terrible. And you look at that, you're like, how are you gonna get that in that bin? Mike's got tricks. This whole machine was custom built, correct? What's that? This whole machine was custom built by a... Yeah. From 1983 to 1988. 83 to 88. With a lot of Mike, Mike improvements. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mike's just got about calibrated it, so he's gonna fire up his switch panel here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen in the master. That means there's sixteen motors on here like this. <laughs> the biggest one is that pin here. Okay, one right up here. The whole point of what Mike's doing here is he's going to get it set up so we can run a little bit of grain through it because he wants to see how the machine's running. Just like checking your sample in the combine. It's amazing, someone engineered all this. There goes the fan.
got it metering the, the auger out of the bin to keep a steady flow into this unit, which then is eventually dropping it down to this auger right here. That's taking it all the way up to the first cleaner here. Definitely got to be safe around this thing. There's a lot of a lot of places to get hung up on. So Mike's been doing this for a couple decades now, so he knows this machine real well. making adjustments here. This way he's uh, maximizing the quality of grain coming out. He doesn't want to be kicking good grain out in the cleaning. He wants to try to keep it as efficient as possible because obviously it's our wheat. We don't want to waste it. The whole point is to clean it too. So. There's a bunch of long drums in here that are spinning. You can see there's four of them, I believe. One, two, three, four. And they're turning and they have a whistle. And this big, long, basically like a feeder stain, takes it and slides it all the way to the back. There it ends up right here. cleaning. So right now everything's going in the cleaning because he's getting it calibrated. The cleaning's then run into this auger. Let's run up here. Let's go over here. Let's dump it in our truck. This guy right here, this is your uh, counter. This is how he knows how many bushels it's clean. So it's filling up a, basically a, a scale here. When it gets enough weight on it, it shifts side to side. Every time, Now, is every number a bushel on here, or is it like no. one point some? No, it depends on what, uh, how fast you're going and the weight of the grain has. It uh, varies a little bit, so I take that number on there times a factor on this stuff. Okay. I would guess point. It's, it's lighter. 0.75 to 0.78, somewhere in there. Okay, two times, times that This number will give you the bushels and be pretty close. Oh, really? What's the difference between this machine here and those two over there? This is the actual cleaner. This okay. takes out, this takes out things to link. Uh, takes out the cracked and broken. Uh, uh, anything light, the wind gets sucked out here. Okay. This is actual cleaner. This does 99% of the work. Those are just sizers. Those are sizers. Those those clean to thickness of a kernel. If you got a real small kernel, it's thin, cut okay. like me. Yeah. Yep. It'll take you <laughs> out. That's what those do. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good illustration. I like that. Yeah. Here's a character. I don't know if you guys. I didn't get a lot of our conversation on this, but feeding great with Mike's so it's a ball every time. He's he's fun. So in this tandem here, this is where the cleanings are going. See all the white stuff. That's cracked grain, that's uh, chaff, unthrashed kernels, whatever it may be, is coming out in this little trickling in here. And this one over here, this is our clean grain. This is what we're going to be putting back in the ground as winter wheat. See how much larger that is? Some of you guys probably want to know why do we clean our seed. Two big reasons. First, is our combines aren't 100% perfect. Though they're close, they're not 100%. So what ends up happening is you get a lot of seeds from plants like this guy. Kosha, wild oats, cheatgrass. We don't want that. We're not going to try to plant weeds in our ground. We want to plant wheat. So, this machine here is going to take out 
90% of all weed seeds, and it'll be just pretty much pure wheat going to the ground. Second thing is, we want the best chance for the wheat to survive. And so, that's the winter, this is winter wheat, so it needs to get it through, you know, a tough winter. It needs to germinate, it needs to sprout, it needs to have enough starch, enough energy to push that sprout through the ground, develop roots. Well, a little teeny grain kernel, some of the really shriveled ones, sometimes there's not enough energy in that thing, not enough, I guess, nutrients for it when it sprouts, when it starts to germinate, not sprout, germinate, to continue and make its way out of the soil. The soil's a little tough. Well, a big plump seed has a better chance of surviving a crusting or a deep planting or some kind of difficult condition. And then also, you know, so we have cracked grain that, that the, the harvesters, this rotor, you know, might pinch a grain kernel and crack it. So it's going to take all that out and it's going to better our chances to get a good crop. So that's why we clean our seed. It's not essential, but if you don't do it, you're going to have problems. But while Mike's cleaning this wheat here, we're going to put the combines and headers away. Let's go take a look at what's going on over here. We're going to be putting them in this building. Just got done sweeping the floor out. We're going to fit two 36-foot headers in here and two 2588 combines. And Leg Arms built this uh, hitch attachment for the skid steer. We've been using this to move our grain deck around. But as it turns out, this little old deal here is amazing for putting headers in. So let's put this header inside there. Now let's put the combine in here. Let's take this one. So I'm going to take this ladder, open this lever right here. I can tilt the ladder over that way, it clears the door when I go through, it's just gonna be tight. Start it up. I believe everything's closed on top. So I hope should be ripping my hopper off or the engine door. I'm just gonna watch my dad here. He'll start waving his arms real fast if something goes bad. I love hydrostatic drives. Makes this kind of job really easy. So there we go. Last time this thing will run probably for nine months. 1547907. Oh yeah. We're gonna extend the auger out a little bit. I'll show you why in a second here. And I can take this ladder. Swing that back. So we extend the auger out like that. That way, when the other combine drives in, this won't hit it. That's back when leg arms was uh, a little reckless. That was mine. Okay, Dad's got the last header. I'm gonna take that combine over. I'm gonna grab some tools so I can take the batteries out. For those that have never had the opportunity to operate a combine that were right on one, these things handle so different without a header on them. That header, you know, they weigh, let's just say three to four thousand pounds. That three to four thousand pounds in the front of this thing, well it lifts up the back wheels off the ground a little more. I mean right now they're squatting down, there's a lot more weight on that bad ax back, back axle, excuse me. So it steers different, it's harder to steer, and the way this combine bounces, yeah, it's it's different. All right, second combine. Let's put this in here. My dad's gonna grab the ladder here. There we go. Just watching my mirror over here. That's my gauge, if I get that mirror close. Our mirror is just about hit the auger here. I don't know if we can fold that. Oh yes, you can, okay. There, yeah, that'll work. We'll get a little closer. I'm gonna drop my fear house here too, down lower, so it'll go underneath, underneath the spreaders there. We'll get this in as far as we can get it. That's good enough. New batteries this year. Take these out. Okay. 
Now for the header. Talk about our iron pile. I'm sure you guys have seen this in my videos. It looks like a massive heap of junk, and it is. Except for this junk is actually worth something. So this is years and years, and this has grown significantly since my brother and I have gotten older. Because uh, the amount of projects, this is all literally almost all projects. It's stuff we've either replaced, repaired, tore apart. It's just scrap, scrap from all kinds of stuff but the thing is it's iron and iron is valuable because iron can be recycled you can melt it down and you can eventually turn to something else so we sit on this we've got a pile of shovels back here and when the iron prices finally get to the point where we're happy we'll have this all taken away and uh, we'll catch a few bucks in the bank look at all those shovels that's number of decades worth of shovels from cultivating the soil around Welker Farms. This is pre chem follow years. This is back when we didn't have chemicals to spray our fields so we had to plow everything, turn the soil over. So you've got just probably thousands and thousands of pounds of shovels here. There's a spring off a harrow back plow. This here actually is worth something and there will be a day we will cash on it. Just hasn't happened yet. What in the world is that? Oh boy. I need a flamethrower ASAP. You guys just finished the wintering. So the bin is officially empty. It's all in the trucks now. So Mike's cleaning off his machine and he's blowing chap all over me. Woo! But uh, yeah, he's gonna clean it all off. He's gotta change over seeds because we don't want to get winter wheat seed with spring wheat. He's gonna go through and he's gonna clean the whole machine from end to end. So I'll videotape a little bit of this. Reversed his uh, his auger here, so it's going backwards. It's actually pulling everything back down. And he opened the gate at the bottom and he's using his air chuck to blow around whatever grains in there. And so hopefully it falls out. time Mike changes crops he has to do this so if he changes a different variety of wheat he's got to do it and I think between customers he does this too obviously he wants to keep everything clean fresh start every time I think that's the process. That's pretty cool. Raise it up some more. He's gonna drop the swing out, hopper bottom here. Did you want, do we want to dig those bees out? 
I suppose. Let's get lean this out. A little don't matter. No. I mean, you can yes, take yes. out as much by hand as we can. I'll go get the skid steer. these ends off. That's my shirts for. So this morning all that grain was in that bin. Now it's in the trucks. Clean. Go back in that bin. Clean right there. Well I had to take the truck down with the screenings to the grain elevator. We're gonna sell this because it's worth a little bit of money still. But uh so we're here at CHS in the north facility. I'm gonna dump this off, head back. Reason I can't dump spring wheat on top of winter wheat is, well, then we can't sell it. So we have to run the truck all the way down, dump 150, 200 bushel, whatever's in there, and then uh, put spring wheat in it. Okay. There's the family out for a walk. the same thing over again. Except for this time it's spring wheat. Mike will come back, finish this all up, then he'll be out of here and then hopefully we get the rain. If we get a rain, then we can grow some winter wheat. I'd love to have some winter wheat in the ground. It would just really help out our spring workload as well as potentially if you get a decent winter wheat crop you can make a lot more bushels. So we're hoping to get some winter wheat in. So yeah this is one of the first videos I've done in a while that's not live stream. I like live streams. I also like the better quality of this kind of video, and I'm sure you guys do too. So, if we do get winter wheat seed, I'll be doing some live streams. If it doesn't happen, I'll try to have videos like this come up on and off. So, I um, hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. Have a good one.